The Chaser Report is recorded on Gadigal land. Striving for mediocrity in a world of excellence, this is The Chaser Report. Hello and welcome to The Chaser Report. I am Charles Firth and with me today is Dominic Knight. Hello. And for the first time ever on The Chaser Report, Heath Franklin. Yes, g'day. How's it going? Very well. Heath, I can see you got a show coming up in the new year. It's called Out of Character and it looks as though you're not doing Chopper. Why the fuck would you not do? <laughs> Chopper is so funny. I love Chopper. I've been watching you do it for like decades. Well, yeah, I mean, the, I think next year is uh, coming up on 18 years of me doing Chopper. Yeah, so like a lot of 18-year-olds, I'm taking a year off to discover myself, <laughs> find out who I am. But there's also, I mean, I've also, you know, been parenting for the last decade and living a very unchopper life. So, yeah, there's just some stuff I need to get off my chest that t- t- Chopper can't necessarily say. You know, you can't have Chopper being like, oh, kids are bloody miracles, but, geez, they drive you crazy, don't they? <laughs> so, yeah. Light observational Chopper. Yeah. I'd yeah. actually quite like to see that. I think I want to yeah. see that show, actually. Yeah, well, but that's probably a thought for another time. It's not at the Little Palais at the Perth Cultural Centre, by the way, 3rd to the 12th of February, except for the 6th. He's not doing the Monday. But other than that, get on it. Right. So, yeah, I can imagine that that would be a bit awkward. There are some observations. You can't probably talk about human rights or the war in Ukraine as Chopper, can you? No, not necessarily. I mean, I, I have to admit, like, I'm a, I'm a lefty, centre-lefty kind of dude, you know, an ageing lefty, I think is yeah. the appropriate terminology yeah, yeah, yeah. for it. None of those on this podcast. All, yeah, unique. Yeah. I don't know what you kids are up to, but I guess I support it. <laughs> <laughs> um, that kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I've managed to sneak a few of those over the line with Chopper, but, yeah, there's, there's not everything you can talk about, you know. So wait a minute. If you've been doing it for 18 years, that must have been, mean there was overlap between him being alive and you taking the piss out of him. Oh, yeah, there was yeah. an uncomfortable amount of overlap. Yeah. And so there. did you ever meet him? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was kind of – it was underwhelming. Do you remember uh, that amazing publication, Zoo Magazine? Yeah, oh, do, do, don't we know it? We, yeah. One of our best writers uh, was editor of it for years. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. so they made the snappy transition from <laughs> from <laughs> from softcore porn to um to well, boating injuries. Actually, it was the, it was the other way around. It, 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 he wrote for the Chaser and then decided that his career was going <laughs> nowhere and went to Zoo Magazine. Decided so. he wasn't using the word Norgs often <laughs> enough. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Right. <laughs> wanted to upgrade the the quality of his <laughs> content output. Um, yeah, anyway, so Zoo Magazine got us together for a photo shoot and it was powerfully awkward. You know, mm. I was asking him questions and he was giving me one-word answers. He was trying to be the alpha dog, like just, you know, oh. what have you been up to? But how, how can you be the alpha dog over the fictional version of yourself? It's <laughs> well, like, yeah, I mean, that's if your <laughs> chopper's the alpha, then he's still the alpha, isn't he? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the fact that, like, you know, if you could lick your thumb and rub my tattoos off, mm. you can do that, but with him... You know, he'd probably just murder you. Um, yeah. Anyway, I, I didn't get it. I was kind of like, you know. But it, it was sort of this weird thing where it was like doing an impersonation of the headmaster at school and then everyone going quiet and then you turn around and they're behind you and you're like, oh. <laughs> well, but, but also if the, if the headmaster at school was known for murdering people. Yeah, had built a career out of murdering people <laughs> and bragging about it. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it was incredibly awkward. And then they were like, here you go, Mark. You can put on one of these white, um, white singlets. And he was like, no, nope, not doing that. There were moments during the photo shoot where he had me at a headlock and I was like, this is just... Oh, yeah, because you could have just snapped your neck. I mean, it was very public, but, you know. It no, was, it was and, a, and you can just imagine him thinking, well, he's there a lot of his <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. going to gonna chew off the ear and make it a more uh, closer resemblance. Well, yeah, he was always like, oh, you got to cut your ears off, mate. If you're going to do a proper job, cut the ears <laughs> off. I was like, that just means that I'm going to spend the rest of my life doing it because I've got no options now. I've got to put sunglasses <laughs> on and they fall off my head and I'm like, that's right, I'm chopper forever. I mean, you hear a lot about people getting, you know, kind of caught in a character for a very, very long time. I know um, Steve Coogan and Alan Partridge had spent a little bit of a love-hate over the years. But I don't think anyone else has been caught in quite as unpleasant a character as Chopper. (laughs) (laughs) And a real character. I mean, I remember seeing you doing it um, in that first show that was like the best of the reviews at the Melbourne Comedy Festival many, many years ago. Oh, good heavens. And you were just out of, was it Macquarie Uni Review you'd started doing it? Yeah, that's right. Good old Club Mac, the Dramac uh, comedy reviews, yeah. Because it was, it was the best thing in the show then. Like, it was just this the most amazing thing. And so I'm not surprised. But, but did you, did you know that so you were locking yourself in for another 18 years? <laughs> no, no. I could just imagine going back in time and finding, you know, 22-year-old me and be like, you're going to spend most of your life on aeroplanes with a little moustache in a box. <laughs> that's more important than anything else you own. <laughs> that's, that's just... 
And a texter, presumably. Yeah, and, and texters. Everyone's always like, oh, why don't you just buy tattoo sleeves? It's like, oh, you can't replace tattoo sleeves at a 7-Eleven with five minutes to go before <laughs> the show. True. That's the, the moustache in the box is my, uh, my millstone around my neck. So, And sometimes audiences sort of suspend disbelief too much and actually end up thinking that the character is the person. Did that ever happen to you? Yeah, some people seem to really want that to be the case. Like, a lot of people get it, you know, mm. and it's weird. I always come out after shows to meet people, mm. and some of them will speak to Heath, and other people will just be like, nah, like big, big dudes with tattoos, and, you know, they're like, where's Chopper? Oh, here he is, I'm talking to him. And you get that, that sort of weird, giggly schoolgirl, like, fanboy thing out of them. From, yeah, from these, from these so huge from dudes. These hard cases. Like, oh, I'm speaking to Chopper, oh, that's real. And yeah, some, some people just, yeah, straight up don't get it. But yeah, heaps of people fortunately do. Uh, and so did, have you ever felt your life in, in danger? No, not really. I mean, because it's sort of, it's, I don't know, I feel like I'm on the right side of it. Like, I had a whole yeah. bunch of bikies come to the show in Adelaide, and they were just so like, And they loved it, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, oh, good on you, Chopper, you legend. You could become a Green Senator. That yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That Not quite support. close enough for a relationship, but yeah. <laughs> so before um, you did Chopper, we had an, a bit of an incident actually. Yes. Um, we were doing this late night show in Triple M that we used to do, our first ever paying gig. We were getting, I don't know, $5 a show each or something. No, and it was like it was like $160 a show, which yeah. we split which five we split ways. Five ways, that's right. <laughs> which so is yeah. about, yeah. about half Slightly more than that. Um, gets, and we were it? doing broadcasting like late at night. It was probably, I think it was 10 till midnight or something mm, uh, yeah. on a weeknight. And we were only going to, to Sydney. And no. so, no, yeah, we, we, we <laughs> were. We were only, because this is the point, point of the show. The whole point of the anecdote is that we were only going to Sydney. So we thought it would be safe yes, to make fun right. of Chopper. Yeah. <laughs> and he just put out this book called Hooky the Cripple. Yeah, his kid's book. Mm. Yeah, 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 which he'd, um, Adam Cullen, the artist, had, had illustrated and it was quite out there. And and so we were just basically being dicks about Chopper for about five minutes or so and then the phone rings in the studio and, G'day, it's Chopper. <laughs> was, was it, G'day, it's Chopper or was it, uh, It's Chopper. It's Chopper. <laughs> He, he did sound um, – the thing that made me think it was the real chopper because, I mean, I was the person who had been kind of driving the, the conversation and my heart, my life kind of passed before my eyes <laughs> in that moment. But then he went, don't worry, I won't kill yous. <laughs> and I thought that's probably the real guy. It may not have been. Mm. But he sounded like he was calling from a pub as well. Yeah, that sounds like him. <laughs> <laughs> I heard and, he and it was just... quite deadpan. Like it wasn't – if it was some larrick and it would have been probably playing along – but the guy sounded no, – he, he, he did sound very, very kind of out of it. But my recollection of it is that he did sort of – it was this thing where he, he joked along for a little while mm. and then he'd just go completely ice cold on you and, yes. and start threatening you. And you go, oh, come on, like, you know, we're just joking. And But he wouldn't let up. Like he'd go, no, no, that you went too far then. Like I'm going to hunt you down now. And it was like, this is psycho. And then you go, oh, yeah, it's Chopper, yeah. Yeah, and I think, like, obviously that's one thing that's in the movie that comes across is you'd be like, yeah, get out of can't We're friends, aren't we? I'm mm. going to get you. Mm. You've screwed me. And then just flip back again and be very polite and then just be, you know, dark and cold. And you're like, oh, man. Which, you I know, mean, it's, it's almost like a, a life of killing people and being in and out of maximum security doesn't do good <laughs> things to your head. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then when you hear about his childhood, like his mum – Tricked him into going to a mental asylum to get electro uh, electro shock therapy. He was fourteen Fuck. or something. She sent him out to get milk or something like that, and just tricked him into going to this place. <laughs> and they held him down and zapped him. And he came home and he was very miffed with his mum. So, yeah, I don't think that's how you breed a well rounded person. <laughs> it's lucky you're not a character actor who you know has to inhabit the character permanently and like <laughs> just ask everyone to call you Chopper in the rest of your life. But well, tell us you, about the show because yeah. how do you when you've got this character? How do you decide what else you do? I think I've seen you do stand up, straight stand up before, and and kill it, by the way. But um, this is a full hour of of not chopper. What are you going to do? Uh, well, it's. I mean, I've got most of it written, to be honest, which is pretty good. But yeah, just um, I don't know, just all the funny stuff that just wouldn't sound right coming out of chopper. It's kind of hard to explain. Okay, this is the best I can come to for the moment. I was yep. in Melbourne doing shows for the Fringe, just sort of getting it up and going and testing it out. And there's a shop in Melbourne that used to be called Just Gyozas. <laughs> right. And what did they sell? Just Just Gyozas. <laughs> right. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's right there on the packet. <laughs> um, and then recently they've updated the, sh- the name of their <laughs> restaurant to Just Gyozas and More. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh. 
So. Oh, so you just jeans had the same problem. I mean, you went in there th- thinking, okay, I really want to focus on my pants. There's shirts. It's bullshit. Yeah. So that's I, – I, I kind of feel – so, so I feel like Chopper's gyozas and Heath Franklin is just gyozas and more. If you know right. I mean. If okay. you like gyozas, there's been 18 years of them. And now, I don't know, there's a salad or something as well. I've, I've right. really undersold that. I'm so bad at <laughs> selling Heath Franklin yeah, as me. the salad. <laughs> like – well, I'll be rushing at him by. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the coleslaw you push aside when you get gyozas from just gyozas. That's what the new show's like. No, it's, right. um, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's always this so, bit so where the, people are So like, there's a bit of chopper material as well as light observational parenting advice. Is, is that the sort of show that you, you're marketing here? Or <laughs> Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, yeah, once again, I'm doing a terrible job selling it. But, like, um, yes. There okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, it's, everyone's always like, what can we expect from your show? And you're like, oh, I can Jokes. give you the setups or <laughs> I can give you the setups and then the punchlines, but that's giving it away. But, uh, yeah. None of the medical advice contained in the Chaser Report should legally be considered medical advice. The Chaser Report. What did you do during the pandemic when you couldn't actually do live stuff? Did you? Were you stuffed? No, that's when I started making chopper videos. I went out and I like, figured out how to set up a green screen at my place um, and started doing some, you know, travel travel band videos and stuff like that and all sorts of different chopper stuff. Uh, and that was brutal because after, you know, TV, you're kind of working with a crew or whatever and you know when stuff's funny because people are laughing. Mm. Stand up, you know, when things are going well because everyone's laughing. But then with the internet, you put something out there and you've just got the comments. Yes. And when your mental health's already a bit ropey, <laughs> yes. you go through the yeah. comments. Oof. So, yeah, that's what I did during the, the pandemic as I um, <laughs> tried not to read the comments on my videos, <laughs> basically. But they went very well, didn't they? Yeah, some of them went well. I did a Bunnings ad about, you know, that Karen that went in there and went crazy and yeah. it went pretty well. And that was all right. And I've kind of upskilled a fair bit as well in terms of learning how to edit and green screen. Are and you on the TikTok? I've been thinking about it. It yeah. kind of looks like fun. I mean, I've got this weird thing. I was saying the other day, I film in landscape because I'm one of those. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Old school oh. dinosaurs who recognise yes. the fact that our eyes have been placed next to each other laterally because yes. our life occurs that way. Mm. Um but yeah, there's something about turning your phone side on and not bothering bothering about costumes or production values or anything. Or, or comedy, like, yeah, or comedy. You know, like yeah. instead of dressing up like a cat, just do a dance. Word, cat That's all, isn't that all you need to do? You just need some sort of dance to an existing no, piece of music. No, no, my understanding of TikTok is you just um, say something terribly misogynistic about women, and yeah. then you get followed by everyone. You become the Andrew Tate of TikTok. You can do whatever you like in TikTok. It's great. You can just sit behind your car steering wheel and rant about something. Yes. You can steal someone else's TikTok and yes. then get more f- famous. And yeah, it's just. We, it's don't a, we sound like old codgers. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, in my day, we had production values. Back in Why my day, somebody you tell those children that their phones rotate chair. to landscape mode as well? They can even oh. watch <laughs> just as easily. <laughs> Nothing. This is my old school hill to die on. Is you know when people are trying to film something that's naturally happening in landscape, like a car driving mm. past, and they film it in portrait, and you're like, yes, <sighs> yeah. That, I'm watching quite a lot of tennis videos at the moment, right? I, I love watching tennis on YouTube because I've been trying to get back into tennis, and it keeps showing me all these shorts that are in portrait. And you can't watch tennis; you can't actually see the tennis court. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's it just, just scrolls the, just the, backwards uh, and forwards. Just it's the umpire nice. in the net. <laughs> I'm happy to die with you on that hill of, of middle-aged irritation at um, Portrait. But apparently the only way you can sell tickets to shows now is on if you go on TikTok. But that's apparently where all the people who buy tickets to things are. Yeah, well, I, I've turned up to the comedy store to do you know gigs with me and the old grizzled stand-ups before. And there's some mm. show that's on before us that's sold out three times over for someone called like yeah, nah, Gary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like people are queuing up around the block for autographs. I'm like, how, how, how can I have never heard of Yeah, nah, Gary? Mm. And he's doing better than I am. And t- TikTok is the answer, apparently. He's quite happy to film in portrait mode. <laughs> <laughs> Filthy amoral. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of the Hitler of, <laughs> of comedy. <laughs> yeah, we're going to break some rules. <laughs> uh, well, that's yeah. it. I would like to hear Chopper's version of TikTok. What so I think I think you'd have some um, tick chop. I think yes, because a lot of them no. are how-to videos, aren't they? Oh, the TikTok ones. Yeah, like they're usually like how to chop up, you know, onion properly or whatever. 
You could do how to chop up an ear properly. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I have to. My favorite sort of TikToks, because you, know, you know the good ones make it through. I love developing countries um, doing things with excavators. You know, like the countries that don't have much occup- occupational health oh, and safety. Yeah, yeah. They're like, we're going to drive this thirty-six ton excavator onto a dinghy, and you're like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, because there there's real content. jeopardy there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes they pull it off, and you're like, all right, yeah, good on right. you guys, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or Americans wearing black gloves trying to put more cheese in a recipe that's already mostly cheese. That's a TikTok as well. What? Yeah, they just get a hamburger and then a syringe and they just pump it full of cheese. It's bloated and crying. And <laughs> Jesus. And then they deep fry that in some cheese and you're like, oh, my God. Good on you, American. <laughs> you know that TikTok serves you content that it thinks you will like. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. the scary bit. Because after the um, Olympics, I got into skateboarding. Mm. On, uh, on Instagram. Oh, yes, because they oh, had all so the... was so good at the that Olympics, was, wasn't it? It was incredibly yeah. entertaining. Oh, yeah, the, the skateboarding at the BMX was the best thing. So I got into... And, like, there's something about these bendy young 20-year-olds that throw themselves down a flight of stairs 40 mm. times in a row and absolutely eat it. And then the glee of time number 41 where they just nail it and skate off and all their friends are cheering. It's like, all right, this will help me get through the pandemic. Um, <laughs> but then I got burnt through too much of it and it got to the point where it was just offering me like four-year-old girls trying to do backflips on BMX bikes. And, <laughs> and I was breaking like, their necks. Yeah, yeah. I was just <laughs> like, oh, I think I've run out of Instagram, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> you got to the end of real. Yeah, I, cl- I clocked it. <laughs> so are you doing any – are you working at all before the end of the year or are you just literally focusing on February? Like is that the next time you actually do any work? No, I've got, got heaps of chopper gigs coming up. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah, doing some far north Queensland shows, uh, doing the Sunshine Coast Comedy Festival, got a gig coming up in Newcastle. So, yeah. Oh, okay, I'm great. kind of flipping back and back and, back and forth so between the two. It's ba- basically, we don't, you don't need us to plug those. Those are sell themselves because they're chopper. But the one in February, which is something else, that's the one to... Yeah, get behind it, Perth. Yeah. give it a, Take the lid off and give it a good long sniff. <laughs> <laughs> See if it's good. Okay. The things he can't say as chopper, aka okay, parenting advice. It's uh, oh, it's not advice as much as frustration. I mean, those are the thoughts that occupy ninety percent of my brain on any given given day. So, how old I'm on board. Oh, I've got an eleven year old and a nine year old. Oh, I'm so sorry for you. Yeah, I, t- I had a mate ages ago, and he had a baby, and I had a four year old and a six year old. He was like, it gets easier, doesn't it? I was just like, no. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a sweet, uh, like, 12-month period where they do what you tell them to and then yes. they start doing what you do and you're like, oh. You say things like, we don't shout in this house and then you'll be like, yeah, you do, though, and you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Heathwell, Heath, well, all the best with being being you. And if it doesn't work out, look, there's plenty of pr- plenty of juice in the old chopper lemon yet, I'm sure. In my defence, I've spent a lot of my life being me. Anyway. <laughs> how, how much of your life have you spent being you? Uh, like easily most of it. Yeah, you're Probably right. with the exception of a, maybe one or two hours a day. Yeah, every now and then for a while. I did. I have to admit, when I first started doing Chopper live, like full on 2007, I was started. Like I remember, my mum once told me that if you start dreaming in the language that you're learning, it means you're getting close to mastering it. And I started <laughs> having Chopper dreams. Oh wow! I was just wandering around, and being like, "What's this going on? Oh, buddy, get some lunch. There we go. Here's a door. Oh." My dad behind it. Oh, look, the phones are salmon. You know, like, yeah, it was. Um, it, it comes was too easily. Alarming, yeah. Wow. And did you start randomly murdering people as well? Yeah, it was this whole yeah. like fight club thing where I'd yeah. wake up with blood on my hands, and mm. I'd have, I would have achieved a lot, obviously, but yeah. you know, no memory of it, and can't take the credit. So, <laughs> <sighs> is that who was behind the Melbourne Gangland War? <laughs> yes. Sleepy Heath. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's just it's solved. Me and my boxer shorts and a t-shirt saying things like, "If you don't move, I will bloody shoot you." And yeah. I can't believe we've just turned into a true crime podcast. We've we've <laughs> solved our first crime. <laughs> yep, yep. It's the new Underbelly series sold right there. Underbelly narcolepsy. <laughs> our gear is from Road, and we are part of the Acast Creator Network. Catch you tomorrow. Thanks for having me.